Uh, we have an hour already. Super. So, since I have to edit this shit, <laughs> we stop right here. Oh, my English is much, much so scheiße. I come not on words. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ralf Guske. We are at the Musikmesse in Frankfurt and I play at the drum booth. the points of my career where I was Shaka Khan, then a uh, pop style band called Schiller, then some hip hop style called Sabrina Zetlur, Moses Pelham, next step was Söhne Mannheims and Xavier Naidu, and recordings I would say lots of uh, pop style artists. Not also pop, I play also with uh, DFAS, uh, the lounge jazz band from Germany. My album is out also, it's kind of fusion jazz. Yes, so that's what I'm doing. As simple, I would say, fun. It's always a kind of a challenge also, because if you have uh, f to do a track, or you're in the studio and you, you are alone perhaps, and doing some uh, drum beats on a track, it's also, I can do like this, I can do like this, or I can do like this. But the right thing to do for this music is always the spot for me. It's, it's like cooking also. Sometimes you need for, for a pasta, you need uh, salt, pepper, and uh, uh, salvia or something, and oil, and that's it. Or you need uh, uh, the spices. So it's totally different every day. You want to have not every day the same meal also. And that's why as a drummer, you can do so many beats in different ways. I like the backbeat, of course. I need the backbeat. And a funky style also, like a dirty groove is going on. But I need spices. It's like adding a 16th on a hi-hat or perhaps change the feel in the normal 16 speed or do some accents that are not really on the backbeat. And that's for me, I would say, it's a kind of a language because we have a normal beat. You can do this in so many different ways, adding some spice like accents on the hi-hat or ghost notes on the snare or doing some doubles on the bass drum and that's it's quite nice to do that I mean if someone say producer uh, please play straight in this point you can freak out it's cool for me <laughs> Okay, let's talk about your two main fields of expertise, I would say, which is pop music on the one hand yeah. and jazz, jazz fusion on the other. Yeah. I would say pop rock, funk music and all that stuff works like blocks. Mm -hmm. Jazz is not in blocks. Yeah. To me, it's more like a permanent stream, like a river. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, in the river you have rapid sections, mm -hmm. calm passages, mm -hmm. broad and tight channels. And mm -hmm. how can you describe in your own words how those two musical approaches differ from each other when you play drums? So in other words, how does jazz drumming differ from pop drumming? Okay, let's start with pop drumming. Every kind of style, like pop music, jazz music, Latin music, whatever. So we have rules. So in pop music, you have to really support the song, which is intro, verse, mid part, chorus, C part, going to bridge, blah, blah, blah. The rule is lift up the chorus, for example. In jazz, you have a different kind of uh, approach also. Sometimes it's about song playing, sometimes it's about creating a groove or like a, like a painting. And this means for me, you're really free playing ground. So you have uh, lots of possibilities to articulate, to, to play the drums. I have my days playing pop music and I have my days playing jazz <laughs> because sometimes I need a straight beat to come to, to feel good and play normal chorus, verse, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I'm not into this and I need to, to uh, feel free and floating around uh, the A, B, Uh, chorus, blah, 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 whatever. So that's it for me. I'm missing the pulse in jazz music. Of course, there, yeah. there is a pulse, but it's... Yeah. I think you have to know more about this music before you can play it. There's more simple or straightforward or pop jazz, mm -hmm. and I, I'm fine with that. But make it work in this totally freeform abstract painting, yeah. I'm lost, man. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, but what the player means, because um, they have a construction in the head of the, of the whole thing, but they play only uh, the skeleton of it. In a pop tune, for example, you have really straight thing and that's straight and here is, you get this, so it's 100% this. So you can think about or you can groove it, you can dance with it. In, in, in jazz, there are so many possibilities to give space for the listener. I like how you make uh, the odd meters feel very good. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, you have mastered to let the audience understand the groove in odd meters, although they might not get the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that has a lot to do with the different ways of treating a beat or a pattern. Mm -hmm. There is knowing a pattern, which is your brain has memorized the pattern. Mm -hmm. So then there is mastering the sticking, which is your muscle memory. Two things. Yeah. But there is another quality that makes all the difference. And how do you get this difference across? Um, easy to say. Um, if I do some odd meter stuff, or I have to really be comfortable with it. When I play it first time, I feel like, uh, oh, this is uncomfortable, blah, blah, blah. So I try to get a kind of a, a floating to it because I feel better. <laughs> That's the point. If I play a feel which is not in 4-4 or over 4-4, I need to, my whole uh, body has to, has to groove with it. You know what I mean? I mean, I can't, can't sit like this and play 
this kind of uh, odd meter stuff. It must have a kind of a, a movement. I have to tap also uh, to the phone. So something's going on in my in my brain and in, in my body that makes like this. That's why it seems to be that it's very uh, creamy in a way. Sometimes I think, oh shit. But I have to do this. Beats have to flow. I like playing like a river. <laughs> Let's say this. Let's talk about a very crucial aspect which cannot be learned through rudiments, which is attitude. Okay. It's a very important thing yeah. in the pro business, right? Yeah. Not be perfect, but how do you relate to your instrument, other musicians, the audience, the whole thing that happens when you're not playing, mm. but you're on the road or something mm. like that. So what have you experienced over the years when it comes to attitude? What's a bad attitude? What's a good one? How does that work? Good question. <laughs> Bad attitude is uh, fuck up the band. If you do fills, nobody understands <laughs> in the band. Um, bad attitude is coming late all the time. <laughs> Making music is always a thing you can't do by your own. It needs people. So you have to be somehow nice to the people <laughs> yeah get a kind of a, a relationship to each other because let's say this you can't do really good music with with an with an asshole <laughs> okay let's let's go back to this musical director thing i told the guys please do your work and check out your your stuff so and then come together and let's work out together how we can bring this music to life sometimes you need cheats because of sophisticated sophisticated things so i can do this but mostly uh, as a musical director i would say uh, play the tune because everybody worked on at home whatever and then work on the, on the rehearsal. If you have a guitar, for example, who's doing uh, uh, rhythm and the rhythm doesn't fit to the bass or doesn't fit to the drum groove, you have to really uh, work on it because I'm a guy who's not saying you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. In the end, if you have to, we have to rehearse it and everybody must feel that he's right. I can say, perhaps guitar player, ah, I don't like this, this kind of rhythm. Can you try something different? I don't would say, I don't, I never would say, ah, please can you It's all about creating music together for me. So I'm only a guy who pay attention of everybody because I'm a drummer and mostly I play a groove and can listen to everybody. <laughs> possibilities of recording music mm -hmm. has reached a point for a long time now that you can do it pretty much all on your own. But what it lacks, I think, is the mind that checks if that what you are actually wanted to deliver is really there. Uh, recording guidance through a producer is 
very important, I think, and, and uh, something is missing now that you can record yourself and you quantize everything. And I think it's a problem. What is your experience with producers and how do you treat the material when players come to you and record them? Yeah. I have a small studio and do my own stuff. You have to find out uh, which sound is the best for the song first of all so you have to work on uh, microphones perhaps try different microphones and uh, different settings perhaps all these kind of thinking other producers have too but from a other point so i'm a drummer and i'm sitting on the drums and i'm thinking like a drummer producing a record so for me, it must be tight drums, and then all the thing, guitar, keyboards, has to be nice around it. But if you go to another producer, he would say, ah, we need the acoustic guitar very loud because it's our style. You have, you have the guitar playing in the front and uh, the, the drums only support the guitar somehow. So everybody has his style to work on music. So it can be, every kind of uh, session can be different because you have to find out what the producer wants to have. And this is the most challenge I would say I have because you're coming to a new guy and he say, yeah, hello, blah, blah, blah. Listen to this track and uh, we have also some drums on it, but it's programmed. And so I have to really um, find out what he wants from me. Does he want um, that I copy the, the, the programmed drums? Does he want that I do a bit my of my style also. Like, of course he needs mostly the, the, the backbeat, blah, 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 and the rhythm patterns that he uh, programmed. Yeah, it's a challenge always. It's, it's, it's always um, an asking how you want it how you want it and tell me more about what you think about this track. Also about producing, if you have a band and there's always, if you have a four piece band, there's always four people they think different. So we have to find a way that everybody say, yes, we are on this spot and we need this and this and this. ever developed any form of systems or routines to create grooves and patterns. Mm -hmm. For example, subtracting the leading voice, the leading limp, and form a linear pattern to explore a groove more. Have you done anything? Probably you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I have some, some kind of different tools to, to, to work on. One tool is my rudiment kind of library. One tool is linear time playing, like uh, thinking uh, about groupings. One tool is kind of a Latin jazzy style independence, uh, doing uh, an ostinato on the bass drum with a hi hat together and then playing over it. Um, I work on an easiest way to 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 uh, explore everything or to play everything and uh, find out that. Uh, that it's good to have very basic things in mind. Like, let's say you have a pause and you have a, a beat. This is one basic. And then you have a pause and two beats. So you have a kind of a, a group of three. 
or you have a bass drum and two 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 uh, two snare uh, beats, and then you can say, okay, let's do this three. You can play now doubles with with the with the hands. And then you have a, a, a kind of a five, uh, five uh, quintal thing going on. So it's kind of a, yeah, I, I work on really basic things. And if you have the basic thing, you can, you can orchest uh, orchestration on the drum with it. And um, yeah. How has success changed or defined you as a musician with pressure and opportunities and all this stuff? Success means for me pressure, <laughs> of course, <laughs> because I'm normally a calm guy sitting uh, somewhere in, in the cellar and, or in my, <laughs> in my studio room and doing my stuff. It's quite nice to have success, of course. <laughs> because uh, lots of people know you and lots of people like uh, what you're doing. On the other hand, I don't know, it's for me, it doesn't make any sense of having success or not because uh, I'm totally in my uh, drum world and try to create music. I mean, if, uh, if some people at the concert, even better. If there are no people, I would say I have to think to have another job or something. <laughs> Thank you for watching Drum Talk. Hopefully we talk not so much crap. Sorry about my English. And yeah, groove, 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 bye, bye. <laughs>